Oh shit, sorry. Uh. Oh god damn it. Third time is a charm. Hi. Geographically speaking, I think California has more to offer than any other place in America. It's like Mother Nature sandboxed all the best parts of everywhere else and stuck it all in California. I mean, if you want mountains and forests and lakes and rivers, you got it. If you want deserts and sand dunes, sure thing. Sweet beaches and gorgeous coastlines. Yep. Best one in the world. Absolutely. I've been to California a number of times and I still haven't scratched the surface of all the places I want to see. Like the Golden Gate Bridge. So let's go back to California. When I do photography for me, I'm film all the way. I rarely leave for a trip with my digital camera in tow. Film is for me about the process. It's really trying to embrace the suck because film on its own is expensive. And unless you develop your own film at home, then sending your film to a lab to have it developed and scanned is also incredibly expensive. If I shoot on my favorite camera, that guy right behind me, I get 10 frames from a single roll of medium format film. Just 10. This roll of film right here cost me 12 bucks. <laughs> to shoot that, I then have to pay packaging and posting, so let's call that eight bucks. To get that single roll of film developed at my lab is $19. So all in all, it cost me $39, give or take, to shoot a single roll of film. That's about $4 every time I press the shutter. So keep that in mind every time you hear the shutter click in this video. It's $4 just going away. And it's just for, I mean, I'm not getting paid to shoot film. If I told any of my clients that I would only be shooting film for their sessions from now on, I would never make a dime taking a photograph ever again. But to me, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to embrace the suck, knowing <laughs> it's not cheap. Film forces you to make finite choices, to slow down, to compose in camera to nail your exposure more often than not with film what you see is what you get i learned photography in a high school darkroom loading and unloading my own film in the pitch black thinking i was getting high from the chemical fumes making my own test strips to find the perfect exposure dodging and burning developing my own prints and being able to hold something tangible in my hands knowing that I did all this by myself. That has always been so gratifying. That's why I still choose to be film poor. With that in mind, I chose to bring a camera with me that I haven't used in about 14 years. The same camera that I learned all of this on. I don't use it anymore because it's difficult for me to focus with having to wear glasses and I don't want an entire roll of film that's out of focus. So I popped in a fresh battery and hope to hell I wasn't pissing my money away. I also put a roll of film in it that I've never shot before. This roll of Kodak Gold. And for those of you less savvy, this is basically the same kind of film your parents used on your family vacations in the 90s. It was a real pain in the ass to wrap my arms around the tripod to film something as simple as loading a roll of film. This was probably the seventh or eighth take. I was fortunate enough to come back to visit my friend and visit this little slice of heaven on earth. 
I wandered around these vineyards after the harvest and had my fill of these little leftover gold nuggets. I'm genuinely blown away that there were a number of decent frames on this roll of film, considering it's a camera I haven't used in 14 years. Making these videos is kind of challenging. I have a general idea of what I want and what I want to convey and portray. And I can get so caught up in the moment that I discover when I get back and look at all my footage that I recorded 15 minutes of this shit. I've been here about three days before the rain stopped and the sun crept out. Like I mentioned, California is chock full of places that I've been dying to photograph. From Death Valley to the Redwoods, Eastern Sierras, John Muir Wilderness, Yosemite. But California is massive. And just like Texas, nothing is close. While my friend was working harvest, I loaded up some film into this camera and Took the opportunity to head about two hours south to Reyes Point Lighthouse, which was another place I'd been dying to visit. I didn't know that on the road there I would pass another place I'd been dying to see. And <laughs> let me take the opportunity to apologize now that I didn't tell you about it sooner. <laughs> Sorry, Lindsay, I know we were supposed to go together. <laughs> It is a real pain in the ass to do this. I don't know how the other people on YouTube do it. It is such a massive time suck. I just want to take a picture, but first I've got to find a good angle to set up my other tripod, compose that shot, then go to my other tripod and compose that shot, and then go back and hit record on my camera to start filming, and then go back and film myself taking a photograph, and then go stop recording and break all that shit down just for one photo. At least the photo came out all right. This is one of those times, much like in my last video, that I couldn't decide on how I wanted to meet her or how I should meet her. There's a number of ways that you could choose to meet her for shadows, for highlights, bulb in, bulb out, general spot, whatever. But. <sighs> As my grandpa would say, shit or get off the pot. After the cypress trees on my way down to the lighthouse, I passed this insanely enviable house just right out on the water. I had both my cameras with me. And in my opinion, there's a reason the 35 millimeter film. Remember the one your parents used to take pictures of your family at Disneyland on is so cheap. It made me feel like a tourist, but there are probably some photographers out there who thinks it makes them like <laughs> artists or some shit.
The entire point of this two hour drive was to visit the Point Reyes Lighthouse. You get there finally, you park, and then you have to hoof it about a mile carrying all your camera shit at about an angle like that. And when you finally make it to the top, drenched in your own sweat, you start noticing that there are zero people around and you turn the corner and it's fucking closed. <laughs> the silver lining is that I've never seen bigger waves in my life. I've only ever been to San Francisco once in my life and I absolutely loved it. But when I was there, I didn't get the chance to see, you know, the touristy things like the Golden Gate Bridge. Until this trip when Lindsay picked me up from the airport and we drove over it. I'm positive my mouth was on the floor as I was staring straight up the entire length of the bridge. We planned on driving down from her place in Healdsburg to San Francisco. And as my luck would have it, even though the forecast said sun, every mile we got closer, my attitude had headed straight down the shitter. But thankfully we had about a 30 minute reprieve. I've got several lenses for this medium format camera, including a wide angle lens, which I wish I would have brought with me. I had no idea the bridge was so massive. And from where I was standing in the lens I was using, it was hard to fit it in. <laughs> That's what she said. Got to see where Stanley Goodspeed saved San Francisco. I hope you understand references to one of the greatest movies of the 90s. Color negative film was spent and this kind of weather and atmosphere just kind of whispered black and white or just black and white. From there, we headed to the Point Bonita Lighthouse, which just like Point Rez, was closed. Couldn't even see it from behind the rocks. But on the path to the lighthouse, I mean, one hell of a view.
some of the things that fascinate me about things like outer space are the same things that fascinate me about the ocean. Like the distances. Most are so insanely great that they teeter on incomprehensible. Looking straight out here, there's nothing for about 5,000 miles until you reach the coast of Japan. If you squint, you'll count about 30 seals on those rocks. We'd originally planned on driving from the Point Benito Lighthouse up to the Cypress Tree Tunnel, the same one that Lindsay didn't know that I had actually stumbled upon days prior. But we had had plans, and like I mentioned, nothing is close. On the map, it's only 45 miles away, but with roads that look like doctor's prescriptions, it was about 90 minutes on top of a two hour drive back to Healdsburg. So we decided to ditch the tunnel and wander around this little beach for a couple minutes. And I'm very happy we did. Asking a stranger to take their portrait is a risky gamble. Generally, people are warm to the idea, but the range of responses I've received can vary from people reacting like you're some kind of predator to wanting to talk shop for half an hour. We saw this group of surfers and I knew immediately that I wanted to ask one for a portrait. This kid who just ate shit on his board came out of the water and he was, he was the one. When I asked, he asked what I was doing it for and I told him it was just for a personal project. And he said, sure. I gave him a tiny bit of direction. I even gave him a countdown. And he fucking blinked. I asked him if I could email him a copy and he said, no, thanks. This frame is probably my favorite of the trip. So thank you, random surfer guy.